Black Drones in the Hive is a solo exhibition by Montreal-based artist Deanna Bowen. It was originally conceived in 2020 for a presentation at the Kitchener-Waterloo Art Gallery. Bowen finds ways to weave her own family history into a broader narrative of Canadian myth-making, one that often perpetuates the notion of a welcoming space wherein all people can settle. Bowen invites us to think about the stories that are cemented within collections, the ways that power becomes visible through the things we choose to remember or retain for future generations. The title of the exhibition, Black Drones in the Hive, is derived from a comment found within the archives in Waterloo Region, referring to a resident of the Waterloo House and Industry and Refuge, William Robinson, the deputy reef refers to him as a perfect black drone in the hive, an assessment that we might take to mean that he is good for little more than thoughtless labor. In highlighting this remark, Bowen invites us to think about the other ways that black labor is described within the archives, and sometimes in manners that are much less overtly racist, much less disparaging than the one we found in Waterloo. Black Drones in the Hive is structured as a series of chapters. So as visitors move through the exhibition, they will get a sense of a kind of narrative unfolding. We might see a chapter that's devoted to the idea of eugenics, for example. Other chapters, such as the wars and the various vitrines that contain military memorabilia, speak to the ways that oppression unfolded on the battlefield. Other chapters focus on emancipation, namely through the constellations titled Slavery and Abolition. Within these constellations, we get a sense of the role that photography plays in mobilizing the abolitionist cause. Of course, this narrative of slavery and emancipation overlaps with the industrialization of Canada and the shifting labor landscape. In some of the constellations, we get a sense of the value of black life, or at least how it was perceived in public archives and documents associated with post-emancipation life. Upon close scrutiny of the images that Bowen has grouped together in her constellations, visitors will note that titles have unique sources. Sometimes these titles seem outdated or problematic, and it's important to note that this is not the result of the artist's own invention. These are titles that apply to the images as they are found within archives. So Bowen's choice to retain these titles is a way to acknowledge the kind of harm that's conducted in these spaces. The earliest work in this exhibition, the petition consists of a reproduction of a staggering document that is found in Archives Canada. Circulated throughout Alberta in 1910 and 1911, this petition is a vile reminder of inhospitable relations between settlers and black folks who were coming to Canada at that time. The preamble to this petition is essentially a threat for mob violence. Understood another way, we might read it as the community deciding who is worthy of being there. At the time this document was circulated, 15% of the population of Edmonton co-signed it. Among this document are some 4,300 signatures of folks who were residents of the city, people in positions of power, and individuals that were teaching at universities. Through research and close scrutiny, a discovery was made about the signatories on this petition. Among the signatories on the document is Barker Fairley, an individual who taught at the University of Alberta, but who is best known as a champion of the Group of Seven. His signature can be found on page eight of the petition. Bowen's petition seems more urgent now than ever before. By bringing this document into the present, over a century after it was first circulated, Bowen asks some pretty difficult questions about Canadian canons and what it means to keep them intact. Do we think of the group of seven differently now, knowing what we know about Barker Fairley? What stories are overlooked 
or omitted within our collective archives? What do we stand to lose when we hold fast to mythologies around nation building? And more importantly, what do we stand to gain when we invite individuals to tell their own stories?